Hi everyone, welcome to Mirka Creations. Today I will share with you three wooden DIYs. Two of them I have picked up pieces at the thrift store that I will transform. And the third one is a pumpkin that I have made for what I had on hand already. So stay tuned for all this. For my first DIY, I have thrifted this piece and you probably wonder why, but I tell you the real reason for it. It's this egg came along with it. Oh, it's so beautiful, love it. I just paid three euros for all of it. And this beautiful egg I have just put on a bed of moss in my bedroom. But what can I make of the rest? So I started out by taking off all the decor from it just scraping it off like that and then i will sand it off completely and right about here i decided to take away all those wooden dowels so i will just take my japanese hand saw and cut them off This video is part of What Would You Make Challenge hosted by Tsena at OK at Home DIY and Connie at Connie's Creative Creations. And they have a guest host this month, Teresa at Teresa B DIY. I will leave links to their channels down in my description along with the link to the playlist of this challenge for more wood decor ideas. I have thrifted this wooden curtain rod for one euro and I decided to use that for legs on my piece. So I cut off like 10 centimeters, what is that in inches, like 3-4 inches, it depends how high you want it of course, and I do that with my miter saw, four of them, and this is how they look, perfect. Just the right height for my creation here. So first thing I will do is to sand off all pieces that I just cut out, so no sharp edges. Then I'm measuring where I want to place them, where I want to attach them. Just marking out the same on each corner, like so. And then I take my drill and drill pilot holes right through my piece. And on the front I will also take this tool to make indents so the screw heads won't be visible. make pilot holes also in the legs like that and then it's a, just a matter of screwing them into place so what is this going to be i guess i will use it as some kind of riser have that bowl in the center still but maybe i can switch that later on i'm not sure at this point so looking good so far like that and the end part of the cutting rod I will use as well as you saw there. Now I'm just filling in the screw holes with some wood filler, set it aside to dry and then sand it when done and then painting. So I'm going for a grey colour as you can see here, mixing some black in my white colour that's all and I give it one coat and set it to dry completely because what I will do with this piece is to do a marble effect. So next thing I'm going in with lighter colors like this white and uh, lighter grays and I'm blending and blending and blending to get that uh, cloudy feel like you can see on marble. So this is the first step in my marble effect process. No rhyme or reason really, just uh, dotting it on with my paintbrush and blending, blending, blending. Mm -hmm. 
I have started with the veins and now I'm doing the same on the top of my piece. I'm taking a feather, this is from one of our hands, and I'm dipping the edge in a black acrylic and just gently put some veins on top of that piece like you see me do here and how many it all depends on how many veins you want so there are different kind of marbles and so i'm going for like a semi kind of uh, veining i guess and then i'm dry brushing the whole piece with some white to get it dulled down a little bit because I will create dimensions here because I will put another layer of the veins on top now so the ones I have dulled down looks like they are sort of deeper in that marble so I'm doing the same here putting it on blending a little bit and then put another layer of uh, just white dry brushing on top And here I am with a thin paint brush, just accentuate some of the veins with some black and also some highlights with some white. And then I am almost done with this piece. And now I have taken a satin finished varnish and I'm painting all over my piece, back in front and everywhere, just one coat to protect the colors and also to give it a little more of a glossy feeling like marble hats. Now I'm putting on my cutting rod end piece on the bottom of my glass bowl with some strong adhesive. Set it aside to dry overnight. And here is my little creation for the time being. I have just put some moss in it and actually a real marble piece on top of it. Tell me what do you think of this creation? If I were to call it something, I would call it as above, so below. For my second DIY, I will make a pumpkin and I will use these plastic play rings. If you put them like that, it looks like a pumpkin, right? So I need to make them blend in together not one on top of the other so I will mark out where to cut them like that and then I take my Japanese hand saw and just cut out that little piece on each of the plastic rings And I just try it in between the cuts and see if I on the right track and that I am cutting the same on the other piece there there you have them and now I'm taking some hot glue and putting where they transit and I do the same on the other side once this has dried like that perfect and now I'm taking this plywood sheet and I am tracing my pumpkin because I need a backing I will also draw a stem for my pumpkin if you're new to my channel hi I am Marika and on this channel I do lots of DIYs, thrift flips, trash to treasure, renovation of my home, some pottery, some painting, anything creative really. Please join me, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and join my YouTube family. Cutting out my pumpkin with my jigsaw like you see me do here.
sanding off the edges to get everything nice and smooth. I have painted my rings in a matte black spray paint and now it's time to take some scrapbook paper and make my pumpkin beautiful. So for the centerpiece I will take this piece of paper right here with lots of um, cute text on it right there in the center and for the side pieces I'll take this green scrapbook paper just cut it to size place it and continue cutting so I know exactly how large I need my pieces to be like that but before I put it in place I will paint my whole pumpkin piece in a black satin color and I only did one coat. Nice and dry and now it's time to put on my pieces of paper. This is how it looks back and front all black. So I place my piece just be sure to put it exactly where it needs to be. Take some ordinary glue, put on, press it down, continue checking. And I do the same with the side pieces as well. Now I will work on the stem. I have drilled a tiny hole in the stem so I could fit a piece of jute twine as a hanger if you want to hang it up somewhere. And then the stem itself I will cover with jute twine. Just hot glue it into place. A little dab of hot glue every now and then to keep my jute twine in place covering the whole stem. Now I want to attach my plastic rings and I do that with just some hot glue. Put it on, pressing down my piece. Looks good, doesn't it? But it shows just a little bit of the hot glue and uh, some of the paper so I decided to go in with a black acrylic to do some shadowing right around my plastic rings and now I will embellish my piece with some jute ribbon and some greenery just hot gluing everything into place like you see me do here and on top I will place some acorns as well and my jute ribbon I will swirl and curl them do a marika curl just dabbing some hot glue where I need it to sit like that and it's done and here it is in a corner of my living space hanging on the wall looking very very pretty I think what do you think For my third and final DIY, I will use these mini wooden cutting boards that I picked up from the thrift store for 10 cents each. They're quite thin, but I will make something cute out of them. So I start off by sanding them off, so I have a nice and smooth finish. Then I will take my drill and drill a hole right through on the top of my cutting board so I can hang them up later on, like so. Sand off around the holes a little bit and then it's time for painting. One of the cutting boards will go in the same grey colour as I did on my riser in my first project today and the second one I will paint in a black 
satin color the same one I used for my pumpkin so there we go set them aside to dry only one coat because on these ones I will do the marble effect as well so if you need to see it once more here we go and just blending lighter colors into that gray that I've just painted let it dry in between and on the black cutting board I will do darker grays and some black and blend it together to get that cloudy feel and then it's time for the veins and I do that with my chicken feather just dipping the edge in my black acrylic paint and just working my way across it with my veining blend them out a little little bit and on my black cutting board I go mainly with white acrylic and I also do some black veins and I do that layering here as well so I go in and dry brush the piece a little bit and then continue with the veining on top of that to get some more depths into my piece and here are the black veins as well as you can see and I go in and dry brushing that layer as well and then I will go in on both my pieces with my paintbrush just accentuating a little bit with a white acrylic and a black acrylic and then I have been printing out vinyls some words that I want to put on each of the cutting boards but I lost that footage so here you can see on one of them it says me on the other one it says you and now I'm sealing everything with my satin finished varnish just one coat and set it aside to dry for a bit here are my two pieces and now I will embellish them a little bit and I take some um, thin metal wire and I will shape it into a heart one for each of my cutting boards and I will put on wooden beads different sizes on the heart like you see me do here and once I'm happy with the shape and the size of my heart I will just twist the ends together and cut off the excess like you see me do here I had painted some of my wooden beads in an earlier project in a black color and I decided to incorporate a few of them in my second heart like that put everything into place cut off the excess and now I'm tying uh, jute twine on the top of the heart and in through that hole on the cutting board so it will hang one heart on each of my cutting boards and here they are hanging in my kitchen looking very pretty you and me what do you think of my creations today did you have a favorite let me know in the comments and if you like this video and videos like this hit that like button and the subscribe button maybe share with a friend it will help my channel to grow and I can spend more time creating for you so now it's time to head on over to my description box and hit that link to the playlist of this challenge for more inspiration just click and enjoy thank you so very much for watching See you soon again in my next one. Until then, take care. Bye.